for me to do is actually play or add wind into the particle simulation. Can you see what it did there? It's actually blowing the particles backwards. Okay? Can you see that? And fall off. Let's see, fall off. Okay? You can see it's falling off. Okay, so now let's talk about animation then. Let's split the area. And now we're talking about advanced animation. So therefore, I'm going to want to uh, essentially here go... Well, we'll leave it at this here. I'm hoping wind is in here somewhere. There we go. We've got permeability, R dampening, strength, strength, fall off, which is F fall. Um, so essentially these these are the keys that we're allowed to do so we can press I and insert a keyframe So what I'm going to do is switch this all down to zero All down to zero and What I'm going to do is press I on that keyframe make sure you're not over the 3d viewport But over the panel you want to animate and you can say full strength or force fall off It's the only possible keys you're allowed to animate so therefore I'm going to say force strength And I'm also going to say force fall off now what I'm going to do is go over to frame 50 and increase that amount and also the fall off. Now you won't see any changes because as soon as you move off that keyframe you've lost your information. So to record your information you have to insert the key, both keys, and so now essentially this is what you're getting. Alright. And then what I can do is I can carry on increasing this all the way up to 100. And I can say, yes, yeah, very strong, but have quite a bit of fall off. And so now you're getting this type of effect. So you're actually animating it as the wind goes along. And so you can render the current animation if you honestly want to. I should have done it with a lot less particles, but at the end of the day, you're still getting a very cool effect. Um, so essentially, this is you know what we're getting, and what I can do is I can scroll, scrub through them frames, and get something like that. I can render the current frame, and so that is what you're getting. Okay, it's actually blowing the particles backwards, and this is how you get grass blades and so forth to move in the wind. All you have to do is set the size of it, obviously uh, via, and again, hair, hair can be done this way as well. Um, essentially, these blades of grass will be affected, and you can also have, um, you know, amount of steps. You can also say animated so they're recalculated in every frame, but do remember that this will add a bit more intensity to this. But essentially, that's what you're getting, okay? Now also what you have is the ability to uh, set all these other things such as random dampening. Uh, or Yeah, so basically other particles can be dampened and others, others may be very damp and others may not be damp. And if they're not damp, it won't be affected by the wind. If it is damp, it will be affected by the wind. No matter how little it is, it will be affected by the wind. So again, you can have random dampening. That's good also for grass blades and so forth to blow them in the wind. Again, you can choose the size of it. So you can decrease the size of the actual particles like so. And possibly if you shifted your lamp out here, you'd have a better render like so. And there you go. It does look really, really cool and very effective, and it's very easy. You cannot deny uh, this is extremely easy to do. It's probably the easiest thing to do. And all you have to do is remember my, what was it, five-step method to animate. And you're animating straight away. You're creating very advanced animations. Now, I want to talk to you about the other... Uh, different fields and deflections that you have here so I'm going to create a new field and deflection uh, not a new fields and deflection I'm going to create a new file which is where I will create a new fields and deflection simulation um, like so 
Now what I'm going to do is come over here to particles, create a new particles, amount, and we'll increase this to 0.2. Or maybe 3. Alt A. Fine. Okay? That's all I need. Now I'm also going to add deflection onto the particles, making the particles very damp. Okay? And therefore they have mass and therefore they'll be affected. Okay? I don't want random dampening and I don't want permeability. Now if you go back over here, you split the area, you change the IPO curve editor, go to the bottom, hold your middle mouse button down to do that you'll see that you've got permeability, dampening, and, and random dampening. You can animate each one of those by pressing I over the panel, and you'll see all of them down here, okay? Now what I want to do is press A to deselect and add in a new cube, all right? This could be anything you honestly wanted to, it to be, okay? But I'm just going to leave it at a cube, all right? And I'm also going to set this to wireframe mode so you can see what's happening. Now I'm going to add in a vortex and we'll choose the strength the vortex will send it in a, essentially a spin okay and I can scale this on the uh, z-axis again this is taking up a lot of CPU power guys it's it is pretty much CPU intensive and we press alt a and as you can see it is animating a little bit differently check this out alt a look how it's going in a spiral okay now what also you can do is increase that strength all the way and therefore you have a massive simulation okay <coughs> <coughs> sorry <laughs> you can also say fall off so essentially if you have ultimate fall off you're gonna get a completely different effect some particles are not going to be affected other particles will be okay it's kinda like random fall off Okay, so you can generate some absolutely fantastic effects. You can use maximum distance. Use maximum distance uh, for the field to work. So therefore, essentially, if I was to increase this to 9.0, Alt A, Option A on the Macintosh, it can only go so far, okay? Notice how it's keeping them within the boundaries. Decrease that. Press Alt A. Notice how, as I've decreased it, the maximum distance becomes less and less and less. Okay, now essentially what you can do here is plenty more than that. Uh, you can press I, and you can say surface dampening, permeability, and so forth. So what exactly does permeability, and by the way, you can add deflection onto any object, uh, permeability, random dampening, and dampening. Now, essentially, dampening, we know, is blocking the particles going through. It's like a solid. I can't put my hand through this desk. That's what it's saying. It's saying to this 3D program, don't let particles pass through it. It doesn't know it by common sense, okay? Because some people actually do want it to pass through. And other people don't. It's depending on what type of simulation, what animation, ultimately, you're trying to create. Um... And yes, I did use animation correctly there. <laughs> it is a simulation, but ultimately it will result in an animation. Okay. And you also have random dampening. This says some things are allowed to pass through and others aren't. And permeability basically changes uh, that the particles will pass through the mesh. So essentially some particles will pass through the mesh if you have it increased. If you have it all the way increased, it's practically like the reverse of having dampening, if you understand. Okay. Um, and the reason why you would have that is because you can animate permeability. If you're not going to animate it, then there's no point. Or, Well, there may be a little bit of a point to it, but honestly, uh, if you're trying to block particles going through, I wouldn't do it like that like so. But you'll notice now how the particles find it harder to pass through the actual object. Okay? It's very difficult because you have so many particles, and also this is also a, a deflection as well as a vortex. So I've talked about vortex, wind. Now what I want to talk about is the fact that you can have... <coughs> 